الإيمان أن السلام حياة قد جاء في القرآن أن السلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another episode of iTrend on ITV. Today, as you can see, we're not shooting live from the studio, but we've come out a little bit earlier to shoot and, uh, at various locations around Johannesburg. The big buzz this weekend has been all about modest fashion wear, hijab fashion week, and with the advent of Ramadan just at our doorsteps, everyone is also wondering what's in store for them for Ramadan, for Eid, for weddings afterwards. And we've always discussed the idea of marrying a very modest sense of dressing and Islamic sense of dressing with also what's on trend. So we have literally come across various locations to chat to people around to talk about what is going on. Our first place that we have stopped at is at Silk Abaya launch and they'll be launching their first season range for Ramadan and Eid and that has been all Japanese inspired. We'll be chatting firstly to a few of the guests that they have to talk about what their ideas are of Modest Fashion Week, why they feel that they, this is the line of uh, clothing that they'd like to follow. So let's hear from the guests. We're chatting to one of the very long time, very special guests of the Salkabaya fashion show, Halima Abba. Halima, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam, good to be here. <laughs> Halima, you in this freezing cold weather have traveled all the way from Roshni to be here. Why drive all the way here for Abayas? Auntie Chanel, the quality, silk, it says it all. Fantastic. And you've been a, a customer base for many, many years. About 18 years now. 18, that's a long time. Tell me why you choose an abaya or why you've chosen a modest wear uh, for your special occasions for Eid. I just find it to be very dressy, very unique. It's Eid, it's special, but better than an abaya. Absolutely. And I always say it looks so elegant when it's draped in a scarf. I'm looking at you today and it looks absolutely elegant and magnificent. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel about modern dressing when you see what's trending on fashion and then you come to these launches do you find that it's marrying and being able to do both and as a woman you're able to find very modest fashion wear with what's on trend as well definitely with Auntie Chanel's her designs I would say I fit in anywhere anytime that's that's good to hear and it's obviously something that you know will always appease at your taste oh definitely I'm comfortable the quality is fantastic it says it all. Too. Fantastic. And what are you looking forward to today in today's show or looking forward to for your Eid garments? Um, something different, something what my daughters would also like, something that's new, trendy. And like I said, Tisha now says it all every time. Fantastic. Shukran so much for joining You're us. It's welcome. been a pleasure chatting to you and I really do hope you find your fabulous Eid outfit. I will definitely. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. I'm chatting to the very fabulous Fatima Anya. Fatima, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Fatima, we were discussing a little bit off air about why you choose an Abaya range. Tell me a little bit about your journey with Silk. So my journey has started with uh, Silk about 14 uh, years ago. Actually, when I first got married, I met uh, Tisha them in Dubai when they were first looking to start their business. And thereafter, I started commencing buying uh, abayas from them. And it's very important in terms of quality yes. um, that we buy, in terms of the abayas that you buy. And Silk has brought that to South Africa. Um, they have been, I think, one of the leaders in starting up a brand that is synonymous with quality, style, and you know, bringing, bringing the abaya to the, to the modern woman at the end of the day. So, you know, fantastic quality. And I've been buying for the last 12 years from them with no issues at the end of the day. And you also mentioned buying for children. Very often people say, oh, but it's just our kids and, you know, we don't need to go too much. How have you found, because there are very few companies that cater so specifically for a children's range as well. Exactly. I've been very lucky and that's one of the things Shanaz and Auntie, uh, Shana, um, Anissa and Auntie Shanaz actually, um, when I had my, my daughter, uh, they actually sold her first abaya at the age when she was one years old. So they have been accommodating all of these years. We bought all of her abayas from here until today. We have those abayas kept in the cupboard. Fantastic. So collections. Fatima, let me ask you from your perspective about modest fashion wear, about hijab. How do you think we married? Because very often people say we shouldn't be marrying that into what's trending at the moment. We shouldn't be uh, mixing the two because it's supposed to be plain and simple. What are your thoughts on that? I think at the end of the day is we are living in a global village. At the end of the day, we are Muslim women in a modern world. I'm a, I work in the corporate uh, environment as well. And at the end of the day, is marrying the two is synonymous with showing where Islam has come from at the end of the day. We are Muslim women in a modern world, but we, at the end of the day, is we may maintain our modesty. Um, fashion is not about, at the end of the day, showcasing just um, you know, new fashions. The hijab is, for Muslim women, a way to showcase what Islam is all about, what we are all about. At the end of the day, is and we like to dress. And Silk has brought that to the forte with modesty at the end of the day, but with uh, you know, trending in a, in a, um, 
in a way that where fashion um, uh, has brought the hijab to the global platform. I was just looking at, a, at an article the other day and one of the Asian designers has showcased, I think, New York Fashion Week. And it's just showcasing that where we are as Muslim women and how our dressing at the end of the day showcases where we've coming from. With seeing so many uh, Western designers also picking up on the modest tra uh, trending, on the hijab, on the turban, on a buyer range, do you find that we finally also making our feet, uh, putting our feet down onto solid ground to say Muslim women have arrived and our fashion also makes a difference? Definitely. At the end of the day, is I think it's it's identity. It creates an identity for us Muslim women, and it's been opening up now to women from other castes and creeds. At the end of the day, I've I've got friends who actually want to wear the hijab uh, in solidarity with Muslim women, but over and above that, they enjoy the outfits. Absolutely. You know, they enjoy the outfit. It, it's very very um, it's modest, but it's beautiful at the end of the day. And I think that's where we bring that to the forty, uh, you know, to the to the Muslim world out there, to the to the world is, uh, on its own as well. Absolutely. I just uh, it just reminded me. I had a friend who said to me recently, she's a not uh, non-Muslim, but she said, I just want to put on one of those robes because they look so beautiful exactly. and elegant. So you're right. But thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to chatting to you and having your take on modest fashion. So Shukran. We're chatting to one of the most elegant ladies I know, one that you are all very familiar with, who started off and kick-started our 2017, telling us about living a wholesome life, a healthy life, a full life. And she truly does embody that, because every single time I see her, she is wearing these magnificent abayas that always make her look so elegant. Tasneem yes. Said Mia, yes. assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you get away without I an know. interview. <laughs> Tasneem, every time I see you, I always ask you, where did you get your abaya from? Because you carry it with such grace and with such elegance. And I always look at you and I think you are the epitome of that. Tell me, how, for you, where do you find or how do you marry modest fashion with what's trending? Look, um, the main thing is like you have people like Silk and, you know, I mean, they do amazing things. They're always on, on par with the fashion world, you know. And um, that's the, like I look at magazines and I see what's out there. And then it's nice to always go to your lady that usually does your abayas and say to her, you know, like change this into an abaya. You know, dresses can be changed. If it's a short dress, you just like extend it and, you know, you add the lace and whatever's trending out there, you can add it into your abaya. So if it's flowers and roses and, you know, the Versace design, you can add it into an abaya and really make it elegant. I'm loving wearing the abaya because it's something that, like I said, you can keep like with the fashion trends as well as be elegant and stick to your hijab. So that's what I have to ask you. Do you personally keep up to trend with what's happening? Because every single time I see your abayas, it's something that I, I feel, I'm sure I've seen it on the catwalk, but this is actually an abaya and I can't quite figure out how you've put the two Look, together. Look, I do try. It's hard. It is hard, but I do try. I try and keep up with the trends and then try and like, you know, convert it into an abaya. So then you feel like you're not, you know, wearing something that like is not in trend and like, or should I say on trend and you feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm actually with it, you know, and I feel like I'm in hijab, but I'm actually, you know, with the fashion and with the, with the trend that's going on. Fantastic. So, you know, I'm going to keep watching you because I love how you dress and it's all Always so elegant. <laughs> Shukran so, so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, always a pleasure. As we're done with hearing what the guests have to say about Abayas, about Modest Fashion Week and about Silk itself, let's speak to the owners and see where the inspiration behind this range comes from. We're chatting to the very dynamic head designer, Anisa Patel Umar of Silk Abayas. Assalamu alaikum, Anisa. Anisa, you've been in operation for over 14 years. How has this journey been? It's been, I mean, from the outside, it's been a remarkable journey of growth and of strength. How has it been from the inside building this brand up? I think when we started Sock, there was a gap in the market, um, fusing a traditional abaya with something modern. So we've held on to that. And every year we just push the boundaries further and we just develop the garments and take it to the next level. And I think that's what's kept us motivated. And that's the one thing that I think everyone recognizes with Silk. It's always on trend. It's always something that's updated. It's always something that's new, in touch with what's going on around us that we see on the catwalks. Has that been quite a, uh, a process and quite a bit of work to put into to make sure that you stay on trend consistently? I think it is because I think you have to follow international fashion trends very closely. You have to see what the designers are doing overseas and try to bring that into our local market. Um, I also think that South Africa lags behind, so we always try and just push the boundary and take what's happening overseas and put it into our collection. So we do two collections, 
So we keep up to date. And how has the response been from people that are around you, from people that are your customer base? What is their response mean? Do you base a lot of it based on what they are looking for? Or are they very open to taking in what you're promoting for that season? I think our clients um, enjoy that our designs are dynamic and very different. So they are very happy to accept what we put out there. Um, they look forward to the fashion shows every year because they know what they see on our catwalk. They're not going to be seeing it anywhere else. I also think because we're trendsetters, it sort of spills over mm -hmm. onto the other by, by designers two or three seasons behind. Fantastic. So I think that's what keeps our... And also the buyers are not just a buyers because I think very often, uh, and we've spoken about this previously on our show where people have often said they don't want to wait because it ends up looking so clumsy and so big and it's just not proper. But nowadays when we're looking at a buyers, we're seeing that it looks very modern, it looks very classy, very elegant way. What, has that always, and you've consistently kept up with that as well to make sure that that remains? I think what distinguishes a silk buyer especially is the cut. Mm -hmm. So. 14 years ago, before we started, Abai's were extremely badly designed. Um, they were not factoring at all. And obviously, going forward, we've got our signature cuts, um, which are five or six cuts, and that flatters a woman's body. So it's modest in design. You cover it up. It keeps to the Islamic um, regulations. But at the same time, you look amazing. And Fantastic. you feel amazing. And, and that's the thing. You want to feel good And that's you want to well. feel good. Yeah. Tell me with regards to your team, your inspiration behind Silk. How did it start? Well, Silk started, my mom actually started the business over 18 years ago. Um, she wears a bias full time and there were no buyers out there. So she started designing them for friends and family. And um, that's how she started the business. People requested and then we just grew from there. And you came in as one of the head designers and has stayed in there, but it's quite a family event as well. Yes, it is, as you can hear. <laughs> I can hear. <laughs> Which is a so wonderful thing. We're as four well. sisters, we're very close in that, and I think we're all very strong women with my mom as well. So we each have um, our own mindset. So even with the collection, we each design our own pieces, our personality comes forward, and I think a woman run business is what actually makes it so dynamic. And that is for me quite a remarkable thing because this is a woman owned business, a woman driven business, a woman empowered business, literally catering for women in the community. Uh, are your daughters following suit on well, this? They, are the little young ladies in the family following suit? I think they all look to, they, they help us design, they design their own buyers, they're carrying it forward. And I think that it's great that we can do this, especially with the modest fashion, to be able to introduce it to people who don't have the confidence to dress this way. Yes. And the fact that they now are confident to wear an abaya, wear a headscarf, wear a turban, wear a hijab, I think that's just amazing to be able to bring that out there. And that's it, you haven't just stuck to being a buyer. There has been, I know, an introduction of a modest fashion range as well. There's been the scarves, the turbans, and like you said, you've expanded. Is there a view to expanding it even further going forward? I think there would be, um, especially with this year's runway show. We've included a lot of separates. So there's skirts and tops, um, dresses, and pants, um, it's very different, very dynamic. And I think that just fuses a traditional abaya with modest wear, Islamic modest wear, and they're just merging into one now. Which is fantastic. Which is and we are seeing that across the runway with many lead uh, fashion designers taking on a more modest range yeah. as well. Because Dolce & Gabbana, they do yes. an, a traditional abaya collection every year. Then we've got Ramadan capsule collections, which Amani's done and a few other designers. And I think that's amazing. And you have celebrities that are now wearing um, denims and they're styling them with long and um, trench coats, they're wearing duster coats and people are noticing that this modest well, it actually looks really good. Absolutely. And if you're not yet following them on Instagram, you need to be following Silk Scarves and Styles to see the constant um, modest wear inspiration that they keep posting up, which will also inspire you in terms of modest dressing as well. Anissa, tell us a little bit about what today is going to feature. What is the theme behind today's runway okay, show? So today's collection, we've um, been inspired by Japan. We recently traveled there and we're just amazed by the beauty and the heritage and the culture in, with the Japanese people. Also what's remarkable in Japan is they hold on to the heritage but they are so futuristic. So we've taken the buyer, which is traditional, and we fused it with a modern collection. So this year it's really, it's something new. So it's going to be something new that no one else it's has actually new. seen before. No, I think it's, we've done like the traditional kimono, which everyone's doing, but we've also done capes, we've done the pants and tops, we've done um, lots of different embellishments. It's, something unusual this year. And there's a lot of effort that goes into it. So how much of time does this take away from you managing your family life and your own personal responsibilities with putting together a business and entire range that you need to launch? I think you have to always have a balance. 
like a work-life home balance. And the fact that the children are so involved and we sisters, it's also family time, mm. which is great because you can design it when you all get together or you can have ideas that um, comes together. So I think you just have to have a balance. And, and maintaining that it, balance. Yeah, that's, I think, the tricky bit. Fantastic. Anissa, with this range, there are people that will be coming in here today, but for many of our viewers, where are they able to access these garments? Because many people are always looking for inspiration, are looking to get in touch with uh, designers and want to know what's available in South Africa. That is true. So we've got our um, Facebook page, which is Silka Buyers. We've got our Instagram page, so the Silka Buyers account, as well as the Silk Scarves and Style. We've got a website as well, so just Google Silka Buyers. So and there's all our always designs, access there's to always on. access to all of us. And obviously the whole collection will be on display at the store as well. Fantastic. And the last thing I have to ask you about is, how do you find inspiration with regards to fabrics? Are you choosing your fabrics very specifically? Are you managing to choose that yourself? Or how does that work in the process of, because we're, earlier you just mentioned all these embellishments and making sure that it fits the vision that you've had of your travels. How do you manage to fuse the two? Okay, I think also what makes Silk stand out is that we source all our own fabric. So our garment is produced by us from start to finish. Okay. So it's not a garment that's purchased overseas that's resold. So we're involved in every little bit of sourcing the fabric, sourcing the embellishments, getting it beaded, traveling for inspiration, importing fabrics as needed. So the designs are limited because obviously that yes. resources are obviously limited. And I think for me also what's important is you don't want to see everyone wearing yes. the same thing again. So that's what's a lovely part about it. From this collection, what would be your absolute favorite? I think the kimonos are amazing as well as the separates, the um, tops and pants, lots of lace, embellished lace. And I think it's just nice because you can wear it with jeans or you can wear it as an abaya or you can wear it as an evening dress. And I think that's what going forward is what the abaya is going to be. It's going to be multi-use yes. as opposed to just an abaya. So this is what we're looking forward to for Eid fashion uh, and for weddings and that, that are coming afterwards. This season. is basically the season that's coming up for that us. That will be the season, yeah. So the Eid season will carry over into the wedding collection, which will then go into the second Eid. Fantastic. Anissa, it's been such a pleasure chatting to you. We can't wait to see what you have in store for us at the moment. And we wish you all the luck with your launch. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's so inspiring to see Muslim women taking such great strides in every field. And through this year and last year as well, we've always seen Muslim women ahead of the game. And we never fail to be inspired by them. These women are the ones that are going to motivate us to keep going forward. We're going to be taking a quick ad break. While you having your ad break, we're going to be traversing around Johannesburg, making sure we get to our next event so we can showcase more designers for you. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we promised you, we're making sure we run around the whole of Johannesburg. We are now sitting on this cold winter's day, and it feels like we're full on into winter at the Image Lifestyle in Johannesburg, where I promise you, it's much warmer on the inside than it is on the outside. We are sitting here to showcase the Hijab Fashion Week. There are a number of designers that have collaborated and come together from all across the country and are showcasing their event here at Image Lifestyle. So we look forward to seeing what they've got to show us, not just to buy us, but how to collaborate and how to make fashion modest and make it work for every Muslim that comes its way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and we're chatting to one of the designers showcasing today at Hijab Fashion Week and this is Nizmira from Shop Style Snap. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Nizmira, you are very prevalent on Instagram. You're always showing us how to take modern dressing, styling it up into a more modest sense of dressing. Tell me, what is your inspiration behind your own range? Okay, so basically when I started wearing hijab, I always wanted uh, to incorporate a more fashionable sense so that whatever's trending at the moment, we could still wear it and still look modern and modest at the same time, incorporating all the latest trends at the same time. So basically I decided to start my own, my own line, my own fashion line, and uh, you can find me on, Shop Style, on Instagram as a Shop Style Snap. And I basically put together an outfit for you wearing hijab. So basically what you've also done is you've taken clothing and made it accessible for women who are wearing hijab yeah okay so tell me about taking for a woman who says to you i'm coming to watch modern hijab fashion week i want to see what hijab fashion week's about but there's certain clothes that i like how would you change it for somebody wearing hijab like i know we were mentioning like a simple dress if you have a simple dress maybe it's uh, the sleeves are like no like in these sleeves here we've just made it more trendy by adding a frill to it 
making the neckline a bit higher. So if you're wearing a tub and then your neckline is covered yes. and then uh, basically making it more modest at the same time and hijab appropriate. So you could tie your scarf in so many different ways as well now so that um, it still looks modern. There's so many uh, hijab bloggers at the moment yes. that you can seek inspiration from as well. So. I also, at the same time, do have a hijab inspiration page on Instagram where you can find me as Nizmira underscore Jiwa. There I, as well, would put together an outfit, make it look modest at the same time, tying your scarf like the more trendy ways at the moment, maybe in a long way on the side and as a turban, uh, just to um, just to make it to look, dress it up a to, bit. Yeah, make, and I think yeah. that's the one thing we're always looking for, always new styles and inspiration on yes. how to put our hijab. And we're finding that because of that, more younger ladies are wearing hijab as There's well. So many younger ladies that are going into hijab because they can, they realize that you can still look pretty, you can still look trendy and still cover up at the same time which is more a growing phenomenon now than it Absolutely. was before. Absolutely. And Azmira, you are dressed by yourself today. Yes, I'm dressed by myself. I basically designed my outfit as well. Um, the frills are very much in fashion, so I incorporated it at the bottom as well. Just little cute frills on the sleeves and the hand, little tulle here and embroidered. Everything embroidered is very pretty right now and trending. So we added a little embroidered uh, yes. effect to it as well. Even on my items here, my items are very much um, they're very much plain, there's nothing much to it, there's no bling etc. But what we do is we've added in a little piece that is trending at the moment onto it. For example here we've added on a fur piece just to make it look trendy. We've added in a few metallics which we will mix with plainer items. We've added frills on the sleeves here, um, a nice pretty big frill. And I love the, the pants that you've got in yes. the skirts. It's absolutely yes. wonderful. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the luck uh, with the fashion show. And uh, we look forward so to much. following you on your social media pages nice. and hearing more from you. Shukran for joining us. Jazakala, thank you. We're sitting and chatting to two of the dynamic ladies from the Ruhi collection, Amani and Zainab. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum assalam. Tell me a little bit about what Ruhi is. Who is Ruhi? Well, Ruhi is um, kind of like a new kid on the block. Um, we are two um, Muslimas, very passionate about what we, what we do and um, we just love modest wear and inshallah we can take it to a next level. How did you start this collection? What was the inspiration between this collaboration and coming up with these fabulous designs that we're seeing behind us? Well, it started from a love of modest wear, um, lovely fabrics. We love pretty things, but beautiful things, as all girls do. And, um, it just, we just created one thing and it took off so well and we thought let's just go with it. Let's do collection after collection and we can't stop. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> what has been the response from people around you, from the customer base, from people who are looking for modest fashion? Um, they love it. They keep saying that we are different. Um, they love the quality of our work. We don't mass produce, which I think is, mm -hmm. is in our favour because there's just so much out there that's the same. And um, we actually have a very positive feedback. So Alhamdulillah for that. Fantastic. And it's, for us, I think it's so wonderful to see so many talented Muslimas on this platform and taking it further. What are the pl future plans for Ruhi? Future plans definitely um, includes a store. Um, um, yeah, and just maybe taking it overseas. And our dream is to do the runways of Dubai. You inshallah. never know. Inshallah, it will be there with these fabulous rangers. I have no doubt you will be there. You can follow Ruhi Collection on their social media pages as well, where you will see all their fabulous designs. Shukran so much for joining us on air. Jazakallah. Salam we're getting a sneak peek into what Ruhi Collection will be showcasing today at the Hijab Fashion Week. Ladies, show me a little bit about what we can look forward to later on. Uh, we firstly done a range with handmade flowers, as you can see this here. This is handmade. Um, Beautiful. We've used uh, velvet fabric, which is so in right now. And then we've done this one as well. So this is a high-low design with tulle. Tulle and shell fabrics are so in, in the runways all across the world. So we just thought, let's just bring it into a, in a buyer. We've made this handmade flower as well, with a little bit of detail there. It comes with a belt and a scarf, and we've got a tulle gathering going on on the belt. And I love the high-low concept yeah. as well, which is wonderful. It's just something young and funky and fresh, different. And it's um, not too overdone. Yeah, and of course. It's That's something it. that you can wear, dress up or dress down. Tell me about this range, because I'm seeing it in a few of them, and I love the colors that are coming with this as well. This is uh, this fabric is imported from Dubai, so we could only have, we could only make about five of each. 
Um, we it comes with a belt in a scarf, and as you know, velvet is so in right now, it's so big. So we thought, why not incorporate it into Navarra? Fantastic. It's, um, the best quality fabric you can find. It's comfy, you can twist it up, it's stunning. It feels really warm in this weather. I almost feel like I need to take this with me and go and put it on. It's beautiful. So all the embellishments and that are all things that you do handmade. So everything is a personal, a personal yes. passion that goes into each outfit. Yes. We also try and, um, where we can, um, uplift our community. We work with um, you know, people that are also new in the business and as we are trying to get into a certain market, you know, we try, they, you know, try and help them as well. We feel that you know, all our smaller, smaller entrepreneurs, we have to help each other. And if it means Absolutely. making a flower and helping someone else and getting exposure to that lady, why not do it? And also this also adds to us you know, um, not making the huge numbers in, in mass production. I absolutely, I love that ethos because for me that stands yeah. so strongly for Muslimas supporting Muslimas absolutely. and building each other together. Yes, yes. absolutely. So Ruhi is all about that and um, yeah, we're proud of it. Every piece we feel proud. It's, it's something unique and something pretty and Zainab and yeah. I fall in love with every you piece. You want to wear everything. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> so from building brands with Ruhi and building up members of our community, let's see what our next designers have to say to us. We've been moving from all these fabulous designers, one to the other, with, and every single one of them has got a lovely story, a dynamic story to share with us. Now we'll be chatting to Sadia from Demure by S. Sadia, assalamu alaikum. I just had the privilege of meeting you last week, and here I see you again at Hijab Fashion Week. I <laughs> know. Tell me, you've got a beautiful outfit on. Is this something you've designed for yourself? Yes. It's something I made overnight because oh, wow. <laughs> we see to everything else first before you see to yourself. <laughs> Always the case, but Always. to be able to put something together that quickly yes. is quite remarkable. Is, yes. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Demure. Well, Demure is a premium modest wear brand. I focus on modesty in every day as well as your occasion outfits because I want to fit modesty into your everyday life. Like today's Muslim woman, it has to be diverse mm -hmm. because we're tired of just wearing the plain black, the plain black, you know yes. what I mean? We, yes. We're trying to be more into the trends and, and fit into what's going on. Absolutely, and I see you definitely not afraid of touching onto colour as okay, well yes. because these are beautiful and the shades of colours are magnificent. Yes. Tell me about your inspiration behind using colours or what you've put together for today's event. Okay, well, firstly for inspiration, if I go to a fabric shop and that's where I get my inspiration, the fabrics talk to you, you know, if you see purple and you're like, what do I picture doing with purple? It's not really deciding before, I make my decisions at the fabric. So when I'm there, I'm like, okay, let's spin, let's do it, you know what I mean? But, but you must be pretty creative then, because to be able to put that together like that means that you are, it's not just a lot of planning involved, it's something that you've got to know. Yes, I would, I would actually agree with you 100%. Like my mother knows I'm a creative soul. That's who I am. Creativity is something I do every day. Like if I just get an idea, then I spark on it. I do sketch, but I prefer to look at something and imagine how it would look in a dress or an outfit. Absolutely. Sadi, tell me a little bit about what we have here because I've been very taken by this colour. It's something that you wouldn't just na naturally see. Like you said, you always mention we see a lot of the blacks. Tell me about this. This is emerald. This, this just reminds me of the Empress Age. I don't know why, but you just think Empress. So, yes, definitely. <laughs> it, it makes you want to feel that way, you, you know, to transform you somewhere else. It, it, it definitely. And tell me, what, what have you paired this together with to make it a part of Modest Fashion Week? Right, so we've got a sleeveless modest jacket. It's long, it's not really fitted, but we've got a semi-fitted skirt. So this skirt over here, is, it's long and it's semi-fitted, as you can see. Yes. It's got a little bit of different colour and shine to mix up the colour a bit. Yes. And we've got a top with lovely sleeves. I mean, look at the sleeves at this top. It's oh, just, it's just it like... it ties in so well with it, this. It, it definitely does, yes. This, this, this is a three-piece set together, yes. And then obviously clients can also mix and match it as they want to and put it together. That's what I love about what I'm seeing on your range, is that there's so many pieces that can be mixed around as you need to. I tell people, come to me with your idea. Like, what are you thinking? Come talk to me because I'll take that idea and make it something else. We'll transform that idea. That's Fantastic. what I do. And so obviously Demure is always staying ahead of the trends. You, you've got a niche market that you're fitting into at the moment. Do you see yourself getting bigger or do you see yourself just solidifying this niche that you've got? Well, I do see myself getting bigger as in um, the more everyday garments. This is a small market, but I've got a bigger focus, which 
I'm sure you're going to be interested in hearing about. It's it's more to do with like um, multiple garments and yes. our general everyday wear, which I plan on expanding. But this definitely is going to stay smaller because not everybody buys these every day or wears these kind of garments every day. Fantastic. So we look forward to you cladding out the Muslim woman of Johannesburg. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much and good luck for the rest of the show. Thank you so much. It was nice speaking to you. I don't think we can ever complain of being a community that's short on creativity or inspiration. Stay tuned. We'll be going for a very short ad break. And when we get back, we speak to more of the fabulous designers that are showcasing today at Hijab Fashion Week. Welcome back after that ad break. We are surrounded by inspiring and motivating Muslims who are ensuring that we all have our best foot forward and making sure that we are dressed impeccably in a modest way. Standing with me now is the brains behind my online soup, Sabina. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum assalam. Welcome. T Sabina, tell me, this is a family business. How did you get started with my online soup? Well, basically, um, my online sook was born after I decided to leave work and be a stay-at-home mom. And after some time, after working corporate, you get a bit bored and you need that interaction. And my online sook was born. It started off very humbly, uh, just with a few uh, key brands. And now it has grown and we are an online-based business. And, and your store is not a store that's into design, but you're giving a platform for other designers that you identify. Yes, that's it. Um, my online store likes to promote and empower the Muslim women in, uh, in South Africa. Tell me about how do you identify or find uh, the designers that you'd like to showcase on your platform? We find the designers through all kinds of forms, through the social media platforms, uh, going through to exhibits as well. Um, more of a hands-on approach. We like to view the merchandise ourselves, ensure the quality of it, uh, ensure that the suppliers can deliver to us and to our customers ultimately. So basically you are the person that's checking out what talent we have in our community. So then let me ask you, how do you find that South African talent and South African designers are, are, are almost uh, owing up or standing up? How do you find that they're fearing comparatively? Alhamdulillah, South Africa has got a wealth of talent in this country. It's, it's quite phenomenal. And I think a platform like Hijab Fashion Week is amazing because we can showcase what talent we actually have here in South Africa. And you can speak of it firsthand because like you said, you know many of the people that are showcasing, you know many brands that may not even be here today. So from your point, where do you see, do you think we've managed to, uh, marry modest fashion with what's trending and manage to keep a very South African identity at the same time? Most definitely. I mean, South Africa has its own twist uh, to modesty as well. I mean, we'll, you'll see today, uh, I, I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> but um, you'll see the talent that we have today. There's, there is a bit of that South African edge and twist to it. And definitely they, they're focusing on the trends, the current trends, on on modesty but also comfort and um, making it look good and feel good and sticking to within um, our laws. Of, Absolutely. You know? exactly. Sabina, with the beautiful outfits that you find, what are you looking for when you are looking for designers? Because very often it all gets merged, everything kind of looks the same. What sets it apart? What are you looking for when you're looking for designers? When we look for designers, we like to look for something um, a bit different, not always mainstream. We love, um, for an example, uh, Diamante scarves. Her stuff is exquisite. She's got amazing, I'm wearing one of them. Yes. And you can see it's a leather scarf with amazing textures on it. So we like things that are different, that are unique within the market. There's things that stand apart, who have amazing quality um, and uh, and essentially stick to the idea of bringing modesty and um, empowering women. We really want to empower women in, within our community. <laughs> and I'm glad that they've got that platform through you. I think it's remarkable and may you continue inspiring and empowering Sorry, women and as just, well. It's not just me, it's my sister as well. Um, she's, she's usually she behind the scenes. She meant to be on the screen and when we got her, she said, definitely not me, I'll get my sister. So we have seen and we know the hard work that gets put in. Yes. May your family business always try, thrive. And thank you so much for joining us on air and good luck for the rest of the thank afternoon. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. 
we've now gotten hold of Fahima Khan from Bahia Kutia. Assalamu alaikum Fahima. You've just had a remarkable experience in showcasing in Dubai. What has it been like? Oh, it's been an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, what's nice is that you know you showcase amongst the talked about brands, people that bring in from Dubai and here you are proudly made in South Africa, taking to Dubai. So it's a totally different experience. And also you get to liaise with the top designers to Abaya Couture. Absolutely. So for me it was inspirational and it was just an amazing experience. And what's lovely is that it was a proudly South African brand that Correct. was making its feet known in Dubai. Correct. Correct. Tell me what was the reaction from people knowing that a South African brand has reached those levels that they may possibly think they've got the authority on? You know what's so amazing is that they actually don't see us as you know people wearing a bias. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming they think Africa jungle, yes. but it was so it was nice to interact and to let them know that we are practicing religion. We love our you know abayas. We love our hijab. So it was very very nice on that interaction. Fantastic, Fahima. Tell me. Being somebody now that's showcased overseas, being a proudly South African brand, very often people say, you know, we're so tired of just wanting to see imports, things being bought in Dubai, brought here and sold. People want to see an authentic South African blend. We want it because I think in the fashion industry, in the modest industry, we've all made our statements be heard. How Correct. do you find that balance with designers here? Do you know what I think is that we actually don't give credit to our designers per se. Designers, not importers. Yes. There's a very big difference between, you know, among Yes. your designers and your importers. I just think that on this sort of platform, this is where you can showcase your talent, you can showcase your actual designs, your two creations. For, so, so for these young designers that are out there, the ones that want to put a South African brand on things, that want to be proudly South African designers, what is your advice in terms of them finding their feet, not just in South African Modest Fashion Week, in Hijab Fashion Week, but also on an international scale? I think you have to be innovative in your styling. You cannot go there and say you're a me too. Yes. You have to be different. You've got to distinguish in terms of the fabrics that you use, the textures that you, you know, actually uh, use for your uh, fabrics as well. And more importantly, the designs that will so differentiate you from the rest. And you know, that was something that Roshan Isaacs had once mentioned on our show previously, that when somebody walks onto a ramp, you want to be able to say, I know which designer that Correct. is. Correct. So it's a signature brand. For you, do you find being in the business that's easily identifiable when you see designers around you or do you think you almost have to work to find that individualized brand? I think you have to maintain originality first and foremost to become that sort of esteemed brand. Yes. Your customers identify with you, your customers identify with your fabrics, your customers, they're becoming very discerning in their tastes. Mm. It's not just, I'm going to throw on an abaya today. Yes. You want cover up, but you want smart cover up, you want elegant cover up. So from that perspective, I think you've got to put yourself up there. Your standard has to be elevated. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us on A. I could Thank sit you. and chat a lot more to her because she is a wealth of information, especially being not only on the local front, but also on the international front. We do wish you all the luck. Zakalak. I must tell you, I get very thrilled when I do hear this because I think you represent all of us that are on this front. So we wish you only success. An amazing experience. Fantastic. Shukran so much. We're chatting now to Nadia and Shaista from the Astora brand. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam. I think it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Shaista, tell us a little bit about your brand. Okay, so ideally, Astora started off in 2009 from a corner store. Um, it ideally started off with my husband and we've actually done just escalated it to another level now with the trends basically taking it, uh, progressing it, yeah. Tell me why modest fashion, why hijab fashion? What was your inspiration to go down that road? I think ideally it was an Islamic wear store um, and basically with the new gen generation and stuff like that, we just st stick to it basically. Yeah. Do you find that a lot more younger girls are coming wanting to wear hijab, wanting something that's trendy to put together as well? I'm looking at you and you're also so well dressed, mashallah. <laughs> Correct, correct. I think um, uh, basically um, our young fashionistas are very much um, uh, UAE um, uh, inspired. And I think bringing that here, however keeping it still modest, I think we're trying that. Fantastic. So we're looking forward to seeing what you have available for us today. What are your plans going forward for your future? I think just basically just evolving our brand and taking it to another level and um, basically just um, making our customers happy. Fantastic. Shukran so much for joining us on air. We look forward to following your story. Sakala so much. Humbly appreciated. We'll be taking a very quick ad break. When we get back, we speak to a few more designers and the brains behind Hijab Fashion Week.
Welcome back from the ad break. This is definitely not a place that is short on talent. With me now is Farida from the Red Ruby. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Farida, we're just a short while away from you starting off at Hijab Fashion Week. Tell me a little bit about your brand. Okay, my brand was started in 2007, so I'm actually in business for 10 years. Wow. Right, so um, I really don't do much advertising because I've like had a set clientele. But um, obviously everybody wants to expand their business. So this is like the beginning. About two years ago, I introduced another modest wear brand called Farida C, mm -hmm. which has really taken off well. So Alhamdulillah, it's uh, been different from, you know, the normal yes. buyers, you know, black with little work and stuff like this. So this is like much more funkier, you know, for the younger generation. So it's been quite exciting because it's a completely different brand from Red Ruby. Fantastic. So you are consistently expanding and keeping up with things. And it's like you said, although you wanted it small, this is growing more than you imagined. So tell us what you've got planned for the ladies here today. Okay, um, actually I'm showcasing tomorrow, yes. but I have like a variety of things. So it will be like diverse, like I have like um, a bias and then I have like modest wear, some, you know, skirts and uh, lots of lace fur. Fantastic. So it's like uh, my winter collection. And do you find that people are looking more and more for a more modest fashion range, things that can be fitted in with a daily wear and something that's modest? Definitely. You can actually see people are moving away from, you know, the, that conservative abaya look. Yes. And people are looking for something like more funkier. And I think because of there's so many like hijab bloggers and stuff, and I think people are going that route now. Fantastic. Shukran so much for joining us. Good luck for your uh, show Thanks and so we much. look forward to following you. I'm standing here with the very fabulous, talented Abashia, the brains behind Hijab Fashion Week South Africa. I have to say that I'm standing on a step because if you actually know how tall she is, she's just making me look good. <laughs> Abashia, this has been phenomenal. You've come down from Cape Town to Johannesburg. You've brought Cape Town weather with you today. It's Apparently. freezing cold, yet we have people coming in to watch this, which tells us there's a huge need for people wanting to see what modest fashion is about. Tell me about your journey about Modest Fashion Week because I know you've done this before in Cape Town. Alhamdulillah, I did. I did it four consecutive years, Hijab Fashion Week. Is this okay? Speaking? That's fantastic. Okay, Please wonderful. Um, so it's four consecutive years that I've been doing Hijab Fashion Week SA in Cape Town. In my hometown, it was convenient. I know that the industry, I've been doing my brand fabrics in Hijab for about eight years now, and I myself needed a platform. So the other design platforms didn't conform to what I needed, and that need. That was where the need for hijab fashion we came along because I didn't want to showcase my daughter in front of men. Yes. I needed a safe environment with a fashion week is not a new concept. Many different other countries is doing it. With hijab fashion week essay, we put a bit of a spin to it. We now did not do established brands. We now focused on local brands. Mm. And now with our economy now regarded as junk, what better way than helping the locals get to the next level, showcasing. And, and that's what I love about it, because this serves as a platform for empowering so oh, many definitely. Muslim women designers. Oh, definitely. How did you choose? How did, it must have been difficult deciding who you were going to have showcase yes. here, because we have an immense amount of talent in yes. our communities, and I'm sure that wasn't easy on your it part. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was actually a, the most difficult decision I had to make. Um, when the ad broke, when we announced Hijab Fashion Week will be coming to Johannesburg, we had over about 40 designers apply and very quickly we create a criteria of you must be in business within two years, your garments must be locally manufactured and you need to be involved in that design process. Mm. Because at the end, speaking from a designer myself, I know the, the work that goes behind creating a look. Mm. So that was one of the clauses and that kind of alleviated a lot of um, throw a picture, move it on and see the finished product. Yes. I needed the interaction and the passion. I needed to recognize the passion in that designer and that's how we selected the and that's the designers amazing. this year. From the talent you've seen that's been showcased today and tomorrow, I mean, I, I'm not even going to ask you for favorites because you're in the field as well, but do you find that there are signature brands that you can look out for and say, I know this is a South African-based designer? And do you see these designers growing as we continue? I think that is one, one of the most important aspects of the criteria we set to showcase at Hijab Fashion Week. Because a lot of people think it's a, it's a fashion show, let's get on board, showcase us once and my job is done, my, my brand is going to launch. It doesn't work yes. like that in this industry. This industry is hard work, it's tough, you need to be part of the industry to be relevant. You need to know your clientele is, you need to understand what the people's looking for and if you don't have that of wanting to be part of it or that flair for passion or that 
drive to be a successful entrepreneur in the clothing industry, you are going to find it tough. You need to be strong. How, that stands out a lot for me. I have to ask you though, with so many Muslim designers up and coming, how do you find the synergy in terms of working together? Has everyone understood that, you know what, there's place for all of us if we work together? Or do you find that it's exceptionally competitive as we see out there with the rest of the design? Competition is good. Competition is healthy. But that does bring the question of sisterhood in Islam. We want for ourselves what we want for the next person, and that is really the level of Iman that I, inshallah, for myself personally, yes. I need to grow towards. Yes. It was a huge challenge with hijab fashion. We started off on a very rough foot, but as the planning went through, we carried on over the weeks, the sisterhood came through, yes. and we pulled off. Because the reality is, I only flew to, I arrived in Johannesburg on Friday, and here I am. Alhamdulillah, the Johannesburg ladies did it. Yes. I was merely the coordinator. Contacts, getting people on board, getting the right people to do the right work for us. Alhamdulillah, this is what sisterhood and empowering each other has brought about. And you've actually understood what it's about because you're a designer yourself. So it's not just someone who's come in and said, let me just make hijab fashion week. You know the processes and the hard work and the stress that goes behind those designs. I've got my scars to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yes I do. And I think that, 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 that is why it is easy to convey that sisterhood and empowerment. Because if we do make, and yes, Alhamdulillah, we will make a success of hijab fashion week for many years to come we are paving the way for more local designers we do not want our other international brands to come over and service our community we want our community to have faith and trust that we will service them and we need to ensure we have that confidence from them. Absolutely. And this is where the player, this is a platform to create that confidence. And for many of my viewers know, this is something I'm exceptionally passionate about, very passionate about Muslimas, about hijab, and also about Muslimas supporting Muslimas, Definitely. and especially proudly South African. I, I'm a huge supporter of that, so I'm so glad to see that you've provided that platform for designers that I think may not necessarily have received that at any other point. What are the plans going forward for Hijab Fashion Week? I think these huge plans, I've heard, um, if I may mean, our yes. support is Crescent Lifestyle. As whispered in my ear, we are definitely taking it to another level and that, that humbles me because I'm from the northern suburbs in Belha, a small little town, small little dorpy in, in Cape Town, that if given the time, like yourself, to listen to what it is we want to do, we can do it only with the support of our community and with the rest of us in the industry. So yes, inshallah, I think Hijab Fashion Week has a lot of potential to grow, not only within South Africa, throughout Africa, and inshallah, further abroad as well. Fantastic. I wish you the greatest of success. I have no doubt we're going to be seeing much more of you and hearing much more of you. But for the rest of today and tomorrow, I wish you and all your designers the best. Inshallah. Shukran, Shukran so much. I'll see you in the front row. Are you definitely will. <laughs> Shukran. We are chatting now to Salma from Ajman, a name that is synonymous uh, with modest fashion wear, with hijab fashion week, not only in South Africa, but internationally as well. She has made us exceptionally proud on so many fronts. Assalamu alaikum, Salma, and welcome. Wa salam, thank you. Salma, Ajman has been in the business for many, many years. Where and how did it start? Alhamdulillah, we started about six years ago. Um, it, was a, it was an idea that I had that kind of um, I went with. I decided, okay, it's, it's a vision. I used to wear um, a stretch scarf. And it's not my background. So my background, um, I studied languages, so that's what I majored in. So it's amazing because I think that if you go with the dream or you go with the vision and you just follow through with it, um, Allah has a plan for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have showcased on a number of international platforms. Yes. I know there's huge plans for the yeah, future as well. Absolutely. That must feel very amazing and very proud to be putting a South African brand on so many international platforms. It is. I mean, it's, it's great to be able to um, say that we're proudly South African. A lot of people um, assume that the product is from Dubai or from Saudi Arabia. I think it's because we really pride ourselves with quality um, and also the type of product that we're offering our clients. So because of that, I think we were showcased in New York Fashion Week, DC Fashion Week. They selected us among seven designers country um, worldwide. Fantastic. Yeah, so it was great because I think it was, for me, it was a learning curve. It was understanding what the global market expects from us mm -hmm. and whether our product is received well. And I think um, in that area, it was great. It was great, great exposure. Um, and now we supply a few of the countries overseas. So we supply North America, Australia, and the UK. But what's still so remarkable with even all of that, yes. you're still very rooted in South Africa and still supporting Hijab Fashion Weeks in South yes. Africa, supporting shows. And that has stood out for me so much because 
because no matter what the size of the show is or what the event is, Ajman is always there. Yes, absolutely. Tell I mean, me. I have to, I have to just um, give a lot of credit to our clientele. It's because of our customers that we are where we are. You know, the South African base is amazing. They love our product. They love what we do. We also take leverage from our clients. I mean, we're we've got a very open, you know, open-minded policy. We feel that if we getting advice or getting some suggestions from our clients, um, we work with it. And yeah, and I think that a lot of the uh, the mind of a, of a woman is to um, basically go with fashion trends. So what we actually do is because the fashion trends don't accommodate modesty, we take the fashion trends and we um, basically work with that to create a product that has functionality, that's modest, that's covering up but yet on tap with fashion. And I think that's exactly yeah. what we see consistently in yes. your brand. I know we are short on time so let yes. me ask you very quickly, what are the plans for Ajman going forward? Um, okay, inshallah, we're, we're hoping to feature in Malaysia Mercedes-Benz. We're also working on a project um, to do an international fashion show locally with some top designers. Um, that's just a little sneak peek into what Fantastic. I plan. Yeah, so, so I'm really looking forward to that. And we're looking yeah. forward to covering it yes. as well. Yes. But it's been such a pleasure having you on. And thank you also for being such a strong South African Muslim woman that's making headway for all of us because I always feel that it represents everyone yes. when it's a South African And brand, there's a so. lot of local, like smaller designers, the South African designers that have so much talent. So I think it's great when they contact me or they ask me for some advice or they actually feature and take the time to come out and feature at these platforms because it's basically an opportunity for them to grow. Absolutely. You know, so. My last question then for you yes. and I've got it, I know my producer is going to kill me for yes. my time but then let me ask you how do you find the synergy between designers in this industry? Do you find everyone is collaborative, willing to share ideas, willing no, to work together? It's very competitive. Um, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of beautiful minds that can work together and I think that if we um, if we basically take the energy of just uh, or basically the, the basis of Islam and we work with you know with a clean um, energy I think that we could work together and create amazing work and um, as a Muslim woman in South Africa I think there's so much potential absolutely yeah. I wish you all the best and good luck for the rest of the fashion week thank, thank you so much for joining us on air Jazakallah so much for joining us on air today. If there's one thing today has taught me is that we have an abundance of talent within our community. We have Muslimas who are not only just setting trends, but are also finding their feet and making sure that individuality comes through in clothing that they are offering to us. There is no excuse for any of us to be able to say that there's nothing that fits us, nothing that looks good on us, because Modest Fashion Week and proudly South African Modest Fashion, hijab fashion has definitely taken its place. You only have to look around to see what talent we are surrounded by. Please, I do urge you, support our locally based designers. They are magnificent. They are making great strides. And it's events like these that showcase these talents and tell us what we have available to us. I have no doubt they are far more than we even did get a chance to interview that are out there. And we do look forward to hearing from all of you. Please do tag us in your pictures. But we wish all of you a very wonderful week ahead. Shukran so much for joining us on air. We've had absolute fun filming the segment of this uh, show. Shukran, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.